How's it going everybody? This is Beat the Bush. Today I'm going to talk about Zelle scams and what you need to know before they happen to you. At least for me, I never sign up for Zelle. It's like they're trying to compete with Venmo, Cash App, or PayPal. It's like the banks thought we need some kind of digital transfer system that's a lot faster. So let's make this Zelle thing up and shove it down everybody's throat because as long as you have a bank account, you probably have Zelle already whether you like it or not. The thing is, Zelle transactions are not protected like credit card transactions and ATM transactions. Once it goes through, it's through. You're not gonna get your money back no matter what. 90% of all Zelle scams are never recovered. So it's good for you to just know about these scams so that the next time it happens to you, you would know what to do and prevent from such things happening to you. Now, how does Zelle work? You either give them a phone number or an email, and then they go on their bank account, put in that phone number or email, and they send you money just like that. They plop, it goes right over. I sell stuff on Facebook Marketplace, and sometimes you would get scammers trying to ask you to send money to you in advance. So then they're like, okay, how do I do that? I wanna pay you first. What's your Zelle? phone number or email address. Prepaying is actually really uncommon for me, although I have received prepayment maybe one time out of like 100 transactions or so. They pay me in advance via Venmo, which seems a little awkward, you know, just receiving money and I still have the product. It's like, they really, really trust me for some reason. Whenever someone wants to prepay you, that's a red flag right there. Why are they being so nice, right? Some excuses they might make up is that they don't have cash to pay you in person. So they're gonna ask their partner or something to pay you or they're gonna pay you themselves before you meet. You could just say, okay, pay via Zelle, but we need to meet first. And then you can pay on the spot right there. They might make up excuses saying they don't know how to use Venmo or other transfer services. So they only have Zelle. So why don't you give them your phone number or email and then they can, you know, do it slowly and somehow get it transferred to you. So don't do that. Wait until you meet someone in person, hopefully in broad daylight and also in somewhere that's kind of busy in a public area. That way, if they try to run with your product, you know, they might have security guards around that might catch them. They have bystanders that might help you. Another one is job scams. You are looking for a job. When you apply for a job, never ever pay money to get a job. A job should be paying you. So sometimes they might disguise themselves as saying you might need to front up upfront costs to pay for work equipment, to pay for some inventory, because if you're a sales, you might have to do that. So whenever a job asks you to pay upfront, especially if they ask you to pay via Zelle, then that is a huge red flag. Another one could be them pretending that there is a fraudulent transaction on your account. Somehow they're able to obtain your phone number or your email. Then they start messaging you. They have some kind of fake message saying that there's a fraudulent transaction on your Zelle account. It can go something like this. Did you attempt a Zelle payment for $2,000 on February 20th? Respond yes to confirm or no to report a fraudulent transaction. Now, this sounds very legitimate. I've gotten texts and messages from my credit card companies. Whenever I make something somewhat suspicious, like a large transaction, they would ask me to confirm that transaction. So they're posing as a message that looks like that. So when you say, no, I did not attempt this via text message, then this is coming from a fraudulent scammer here. Then they know, oh yeah, you're, you're in the loop here. So then you might get a call later on and then they're gonna walk you through a system where you transferred money over. So in order to stop this from happening, what you can do is just transfer money to yourself and they're gonna send you a link to do that. So once you click that link, it actually looks like it's to your account, but instead it's actually you sending money not to yourself, but instead you're sending it to the scammer instead. So once you do that, your money is gone, they disappear with your money. Another one is that you sell something online. It could be an auction site or whatever. Maybe the listing ended successfully and someone is legitimately about to buy it, but you get an email saying that you've been paid via a Zelle account, but this is a business account. So you cannot actually retrieve the money. In order to retrieve the money, you need to upgrade your account and they're gonna list various amounts of money, maybe $100 for a one year subscription, or maybe as high as like $1,000 to get a business account. So once you get into this system saying, okay, I'm gonna upgrade my account in order to receive my money of, 
I don't know, thousands of dollars, whatever that you sold, then you inadvertently paid them. Another one I don't hear people talk about is a link that is loaded with malware. So it can be a link that looks legitimate, but then as soon as you click it, you don't even have to like put in any kind of login information. As soon as you click it, it takes advantage of some kind of browser vulnerability in your computer or on your phone, and it loads a backdoor into those devices. And then once they get in, they can do whatever they want on your computer, look up some passwords or whatnot. So that's why it's so dangerous to click on a link from someone that you don't know, from some phone number that you don't know. So even if it's like, hey, take a look at this funny picture or something, once you click it, bam, right there. You've given access to a scammer to your entire computer, at which point they can go and sift through bunch of data, find login information and whatnot. A less sophisticated one that doesn't require as much computer knowledge and like security hacks or whatnot is just phishing scams. And I get a lot more of those than these loaded malware type of links. Of course, they also have phishing scams. It can happen to your Zelle account where they ask you to verify your login information. I personally think this is a little played out because people have caught on. It's like, what? Login for information, right? Most of the time you should just go to the website yourself, type it in and make sure that it's spelled correctly. You think you're at the correct website and it looks like Bank of America, but it isn't. I know one time I used a gift card website, you know, those little Visa gift card thing. And then I typed it in, I spelled it wrong or something. Oh my gosh, I was freaking out because it was just slightly off and it's obviously it's a scammer website made to look like the original website. Whenever you have a transaction end online and it's publicly available, you might have other scammers out there monitoring this and then they're like, okay, maybe they're about to pay via Zelle. So they would send you an email asking you to send a small amount to that account. This is kind of like when you try to verify a bank account, right? They deposit like two small sums, like 24 cents and 27 cents. And then in order to verify that your bank account is linked, you go back to the initiating bank account and then you go, okay, the amount that you sent was 20 cents, whatever amount. So it's kind of like that. It's asking you to send a small amount, just $1 or whatever, and then they can verify that things are working. After all the verification is done, you will get refunded that small amount. So you're like, okay, I really need to send this money to them in order to purchase whatever product it is that you purchase. So you type in your login information and right there, you know, you're, you're dead right there because that website is the scammer's website and you just gave them your login information. They take your login information, they log into your account and they do whatever, they send a bunch of Zelle fraudulent transactions to their own Zelle and then they take your money and run. They're like halfway around the world. You can't catch them. Rental scams, this is a big one because it involves huge amounts of money. It can be thousands of dollars because it involves security deposits and rent is quite expensive these days. So in order to protect yourself, know that there can be fake properties. There could be legitimate looking properties that the scammer copied and then they just changed the contacts. So when you contact that particular listing, it's not the person that you really want to talk to and they don't even own the property. For rentals, especially with the pandemic and stuff, right? They might avoid in-person viewing of the property. So they're like, okay, we're only going to do virtual tours. Everything is virtual. So you never see the person. And then at some point, you've never seen one person. You want to rent the place. And then they ask you to send money for the security deposit, some money for the background check and also the application fee and they ask you to send it via Zelle. If they're asking for that, you just say, no, I'm not gonna send it through that. It's not secure. You really want to see the property in person. Don't send money via Venmo, cryptos, gift cards. Instead, use wire transfers, cashier's check, or even personal check. Those are a lot more secure. You can track them down. You can see which bank account you are sending it to or which bank account they have deposited to. If it's found that it's fraudulent, there's a much bigger chance that they can reverse those charges because it's in actually someone's bank account that is linked to someone's name with a driver's license. Personally, I think Zelle has gotten out of hand. The fact that it's so not secure and that you can't get your money back if there's some fraudulent activity makes it so that 
I even want to disable access to it on my bank accounts. I hope this helps you avoid some of these scams. Remember, whenever you make a huge transaction of whatever amount, like over a thousand dollars, I recommend to consult with someone that you trust. Just kind of talk it over with them. It's like, I think I'm gonna do this and this, you know, it's gonna cost me this much. What do you think about it, right? You think this is fraudulent or not? And oftentimes these fraudulent activities, they really pressure you in high pressure tactics saying, oh, it's only available for a limited time for just today or the next few hours. So you better send that money quick, quick, quick. Thanks for watching this video. Don't forget to give me a like and subscribe for more. Thanks for watching.